I want you to take your Bible, turn to uh, 1 John, if you would. I'm going to start there. That is sort of where we ended in Sunday school. And the Sunday school lesson is going to dovetail. Um, that's a carpenter's term. You make cuts in wood so that they join together and they stick together. So they're going to, it's called a dovetail. And uh, so the Sunday school message is going to dovetail into the sermon. And we're just going to continue on learning something or re relearning something or reminding ourselves of something that we need reminded of every now and then. I, what I preached in Sunday school was concerning false brethren. And I've, I've been teaching the doctrine of false, false Christians. The Bible teaches the presence of them. They'll be in, they'll be in a church. Are they in every church? It's possible. It could very well be that there are people who one day, one Sunday will be in church and the next Sunday not ever in church ever again. And I'm not saying going to church makes you a Christian, but being a Christian makes you come to church. Am I saying that right? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As some do. So when you're a Christian, you gather together with God's people. You know, this is manifest. When, when ball players play ball, it doesn't matter what team they're on. Edward's got a Cardinal shirt on, so he's my guy. Okay? So, I'm guessing Edward is a St. Louis Cardinals baseball fan. Okay? The word fan is short for fanatic. And that, I guess, sums him up. Fanatic. We like our Cardinals. We like our Blues. We used to like our Rams. We don't like our Rams anymore. There's nothing to like anymore. Okay? But when two, when two ball teams play ball, they don't dress alike. Think about it. They don't look the same. They, they're, I, I, and I'd learned playing, I played one season of high, junior high school basketball. One season. And we had a home jersey. And we had an away jersey that we wore. And so that our team didn't look like the other team, even if we had sort of similar colors. Ours, I played for Festus, it was black and gold. Well, Windsor up here has sort of a goldish color too. So we had to wear a dark jersey while we were away and they wore a light jersey while they were playing. But here's my point. It's obvious that they're on different teams. And that one is not playing for the other. It becomes obvious after a while whose side everybody's on. Okay? So I'm going to preach a message on biblical separation. And it's going to be real simple. Maybe real short. We'll see. But it's going to be very simple things and simple issues. When we are saved... There are things we don't do. There are teams we don't play for. We don't root for. And one guy who plays for one team doesn't switch and play for the other team wearing the 
the old, the old, the other teams, the same uniform. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. The cub, a cub player doesn't run over and, and sit in the Cardinals bench and say, I'm going to play for you guys today wearing a Cubs uniform. The fans would throw him out. Okay. If you're going to be on our side, be on our side. Wear our colors. And I'm going to preach a very simple message. Biblical separation. Things that we don't do. Places we don't go. People we don't team with. It's that simple. So first, first place I want you to go is 1 John chapter 2. That's not up on the screen, so get your Bible out. What we learned in Sunday school was about false brethren. And I taught about the doctrine of false brethren. And then the Bible gave examples. It actually named certain people by name. There was a man by the name of Demas. That when Paul was writing to the Colossian churches, he's giving a name list of people that he's associating with up there that the Colossian people might know. And he's listing some of the people that have stayed with him all those years. Luke, the beloved physician he mentioned, we know that he continued in the faith. God allowed him to write the, book, the gospel according to Luke and the book of Acts. And I believe Luke was the only Gentile writer of the Bible. I could be wrong on that, but that's just my opinion. But he stayed with the Apostle Paul. Then there was a man by the name of Demas. And as, and as Paul's writing out the last few words of the book of Colossians, he says, and Demas, Demas says hi. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what it was. Demas is with us and he's saying, he's sending greetings to you. Then we find out in the last letter that Paul wrote, which is 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world and has gone away. He left. He quit teaming up with us and he went and he joined the world and he's gone. And right before that, Paul says, I've finished the course, I've kept the faith. And that's what it was all about. It was not about the works. It was about your faith. Paul kept the faith. Demas didn't. And he loved this world and the things and the people in this world. He loved them and he clinged to it. And it had its hold in his life and it became obvious. And I... I've preached enough sermons in my life to know that just because I preach something and you hear it, that doesn't mean that that's going to make some big change in your life. Only God does that. But I'm, this is going to go out two ways. One, it's going to be an admonition to those whom God is going to keep. And it's going to be a warning of judgment to those that God already knows is not going to stay. So, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. So when Paul said, Demas hath, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 fits in with that when it says, Love not the world, neither the what? Things that are in the world. The things that are in the world. There are ungodly things to belong to. There are ungodly places to go to. Am I right? Ungodly places to go to. There are ungodly things to see. There are ungodly things to hear. Am I right? 
There are ungodly people to be with. And I can go on and on and on. Ungodly things to do. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, it doesn't say has left him. It says is not in him. And it just, God just always shows who is and who isn't. He always does that. He makes it manifest. He proves it. So that was the, and that was part of the Sunday school lesson was, there was certain people mentioned by name. Demas was one of them. And I didn't get to Ananias and Sapphira, who were part of the early church that lied. They were lying to the church. They were lying to the apostles. And God got them for lying to the Holy Ghost. And they dropped dead. Listen to this now. God did this in front of the church. He, all of a sudden, Ananias shows up. He gets caught in his lie. The Holy Ghost kills him right, then, right in front of everybody. Kills him. And men take him out and bury him right then. When his wife shows up, they asked her straight out what had happened. She told the same lie. And the apostles said, the men who just took your husband out and buried him are fixing to bury you. And she dropped dead right there in front of the church. And they took her out and buried her next to her husband. Right then and there, it's over with. God can get pretty serious about these things. So he says in verse 16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh... The lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of, it's not of who? It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. When the prodigal son decided to leave, and he went to his father and he said, give me all that's going to be mine. His father knew there's no stopping him. He loves the world. Let him go. Let him go. So his father knew that his son loved the world. And he let him go. Now, not everyone that leaves stays gone. Some come back. Some come back. But some don't. Just happened to be the case in the prodigal son that he came back. Realizing that the world was not what he thought it was. The world did not treat him well. And he ended up, listen now, he ended up hating the world. And loving his father. Who did he go back to? Father. God will always welcome you back. Now, turn to Jeremiah chapter 51, I think. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, Jeremiah chapter 51. And when you get there... We're going to have a word of prayer. Now, I don't know who I'm preaching this to. Could be to me. It could be to someone in my family. It could, it could be not for anybody here, but maybe somebody online. I don't know. 
But we're going to relearn the principle of biblical separation. Biblical separation. Let's go to the word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. And let's ask God to help us. Heavenly Father, I cannot preach this message to do any benefit in anybody's life. I cannot change anybody's life. I cannot change their mind. I cannot change their heart. I cannot do. I've learned that, Father. I, there's just some things I cannot do. And if it was me changing somebody, somebody else come along and change them back. God, when you changed me, you kept me. You brought me back. And you kept me. And that's what I'm asking you to do, Father, with this message. Is use it, God, maybe to bring somebody back. Help us, dear God, to understand what this world really is. It's a lie. Everything in this world is a big, big pile of vanity and lies. And Father, I hate this world. This world has brought nothing to us but grief, torture, Sad, lonely hearts, bitterness, grief, anguish, sorrow, contempt, division, injury, sin. Father, I hate this world. And I wish not to be part of it any longer than I have to be. I long to be in heaven. I long for your kingdom. I yearn for it. Lord, the troubles that we've experienced in our lives, Father, have led us to, to the conclusion that we don't want to be in this world one day longer than what you have appointed for us. We'll leave that into your hands, Father, and help us, dear God, to understand that to be absent from this body is to be present with you. And that's where our hearts want to be. Now, Father, there may be somebody watching or listening today that's on the fence. And the fence is there as a divisor between one side or the other. Like a, like a volleyball net. That net's there to separate. And there may be somebody today that's on the fence. Father, we invite them over. To come be on the mon minority side. Obviously, God, there are more people. Who are living for the devil. Than there are living for the Lord. And Father, we're inviting all of those who want to come live for the Lord to join the lesser of the crowd. But Father, I pray, dear God, that you would separate us from this world. It's not, there's nothing here that's worth it. My soul and where it spends eternity means everything to me, Father. And I don't want to lose it. Just for the vanity of this world. So Father separate your people today is what I'm asking. We pray this in Jesus name. All of God's people said. All of God's people said. Amen. Jeremiah 51 verse 6. There's a lot of. Uh, can I ask you to do something today? There's a lot of shuffling. 
It's a lot of talking. There's a lot of movement. I'm going to ask you, this is the house of the Lord and this is the service of the Lord. So can I ask you to give heed to the word of the Lord this morning? Can I, can I politely ask that? Jeremiah 51 verse 6. I want you to have your Bible open. I want you to read the word of God. God told Israel, flee out of the midst of Babylon. You understand what Babylon is? Babylon is this world. She is the harlot spirit that is in this world. She is, in, she is the one that is in direct control of the vanities of this world. She's the one that's doing all this. She's the one that when, when governments do things that are wrong, she's the, one, she's the one that was responsible for that behind the scenes. Whenever, whenever a movie is made that has ungodly things in it, she's the one that put them in there. Whenever a song is written that has vulgar, nasty, ungodly things in there, she's the one that wrote the song. She inspired the song. She gave the song to whoever wrote it, helped them sing it. She produces movies, TV shows, cartoons, books, magazines, news stories, movies, TV shows. I already mentioned all that. Advertisements. She's the one that produces, she's the one that does all of that. She's the one who leads people down the road to hell. The Bible talks about her in the book of Proverbs, calls her the strange woman. Her steps lead to hell. And I'm asking you this morning, who wants to go to hell? And wh what, what is it in this world that to you is so important for you to hang on to that's you, worth you going to hell over? Nothing. Nothing is to me. My soul. I don't want to lose my soul. I've lost things in this world. I'm not happy about that. But I will eventually lose everything that's in this world. Eventually, it's all going away. One day or another. But my soul, I want to keep. I want to go to heaven when I die. And there is nothing in this world that's worth hanging on to for me to lose my soul over. Not a million dollars. Not, not nobody. Nothing. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Listen to what that Bible said. Every man or every woman, you and you alone are responsible for leaving Babylon. Babylon is the crowd. Babylon is the world. Babylon where, is where everybody else is. And there is a part of you that wants to be over there where everybody else is. Is there not? There's a part of you that wants to be there. We're not kidding ourselves here. When I, when I look and see where they're going, I say to myself, Mike, it is not worth it to go with them. They're going to hell. I was, I was taught, there, there's a reason why Lisa is my wife. I was taught growing up here, you pick a wife, that believes what you believe. I had a girl picked. In Bible college. Where she is now. I don't even want to say it. But I was going to pick. I had her picked. And God said. Uh uh. I'm going to split you off. I'm going to cut you off from her. God knew exactly what he was doing. And he put me with Lisa Leonard, of all people. And she is my best friend.
I wouldn't lose her. There's nothing in this world worth losing my wife over. Nothing. Deliver every man his soul. This sermon is for you and you alone. And you're saying, who? You. Each one of you individually. This is for you. You must deliver your soul. It is your choice. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. I mean, if you, if you saw God raining fire and brimstone down upon St. Louis, Missouri, would you want to go up there? You'd be fleeing there. You'd be going, I I'm not going up there. God's raining fire and brimstone down on St. Louis, Missouri because they're a gay pride parade. You think God won't do that? God did it to Sodom. Gomorrah. No, you would flee out of there. You'd say, God, listen, and I'm telling you, all that part of all the world, that's, what, that's what's going to happen to them. God's going to rain fire and brimstone down. God's going to judge them. God's got seven trumpet judgments and he's got seven vials of wrath to pour out upon those. And I don't want any part of those. You read the book of Revelation next time to, when you go home today and you tell yourself, do I want to be part of that? Do I want to be some of those screaming hordes that are trying to flee the flames and then when they die, they get judged and go to hell anyway? He will render unto her a recompense. God's going to get her back. Babylon, is, listen to this now. Here's the reason why Babylon is. Here's the reason why Babylon exists. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. You know what God uses Babylon for? Are you listening? He uses Babylon to show who is and who ain't. You remember what Achan stole when he went into Jericho? He found a wedge of gold, but he found a Babylonish garment. He found, Edward, a Cubs uniform and was going to wear it. He liked it. He liked how it looked. He stole it because he liked how it looked. He was going to put that thing on. He was going to try to... And what he was doing was showing that he was part... I'm, I'm not part of Israel. I'm part of Babylon. He had a Babylonish garment on. And God said, I'm going to get her. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand to show who is and who isn't. He draws a line. He places Babylon over here and he says, okay, now everybody who's going to be with Babylon, go over here to Babylon. And people go to Babylon. But everybody that's on the Lord's side, stay right here. And God's people stay right here. And the two... Don't mingle. They don't. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. The word mad means crazy. They're out of their mind. They don't think right anymore. That means they read the Bible and they don't believe it. That means they hear a sermon and it's nothing, just rolls off like water off a duck's back. They hear the word of God, they read the word of God, the word of God's given to them, but the, the wine of Babylon has made them crazy out of their mind and so it, the, the word of God does nothing to them at all, has no effect on them whatsoever. And I'm going to show you what that wine is. You're probably not going to like it. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her, take balm for her pain. If so, she, if so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go, everyone into his own country, for her judgment reaches unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And I have struggled all my life. With one sin after another. Struggling. 
begging God, help me, God, help me, please help me. I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to die. I don't, want to, I don't want to be destroyed in hell. I don't want that. So, for all of my life, God has been delivering me from one thing after another. And I'm glad. Because I know where Babylon's going. And I don't want to be there with her when God does what He's going to do. Now turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 18. This is where it's going to get tough. Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. There's two cups you can drink out of. The cup of the Lord or the cup of devils. The cup of the Lord is the Bible, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, salvation. But that salvation also means separation. Who's influencing who in in relationships? Who's leading who? Had I married the wrong wife, I probably would have been led down the wrong path. Because the girl that I had picked, I'm telling you, is way out on the wrong path. Right now. God knew what he was doing. When he separated me. Because I'd have have done anything for her. Just like I would do anything now. For the wife that I have. I would, I would do anything for that woman. I want her healed. And I want her well. Because I need her. In my life. To keep doing what I'm doing. I need her. I can't live without her. I don't want to. But in your relationships, who's leading who? Who is influencing who? When I was a boy, I used to hang around a guy. I was going to church and Sunday school and he wasn't. And his mom and dad allowed him to do things that my mom and dad didn't allow me to do. And we hung around each other for a while. And in all that time, he never started going to church with me. Never. But I started doing some of the things he was doing. And God, in His grace, separated me and Him. You understand that? It is God's grace. It is God's grace that He does not turn you over to following who you're associated with. Because He can turn you over just like that. You don't believe that? Read Romans 1. For this cause, God turned it, gave them over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate means no probation. We're not playing around. I'm going to judge you. And I'm going to turn you over to this. It is by God's grace that you're still sitting in church today. Who says amen to that? How many people... And our lives have tried to lead us to Babylon. How many? How many is doing it right now? You have influences. Maybe online. Influences on television. 
I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand who watches Ellen. That woman is a sick, lesbian, heathen, Babylonish, wicked woman. Who tells funny jokes and draws people to Babylon. She's going to hell and everybody that laughs with her is going to be laughing all the way down to hell. Somebody say amen. You see in Romans 1, it's not just the people who do those things. It's the people who say that what they're doing is okay. Oh, I don't agree with what she does, but I like her. I listen to her. Why? You want God to turn you over? You want God to make your mind reprobate so that you don't believe the Bible no more? Have you not seen that happen out of people? Have you not seen them turn away from the Word of God and go out to Babylon? Revelation 18, verse 2. It's an angel. He cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. What lives in Babylon? Devils. Is that who you want to be around? You want to be around devils? You want devils on? Listen, I've had devils on me all week. I don't want to be around them. I hate them. I hate the thoughts that they put in my head. I hate what they, how they, how they oppress me. I don't want to be around them. I want to be where God is. And God is not in Babylon. Babylon has become a habitation of devils and a hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. He's talking about devils with wings. Devils that will cause you to... Devils that are dope head at devils. Dope devils. Alcohol devils. Fornication devils. Sodomy devils. Witchcraft devils. Every kind of evil thing has a devil that's just, just t getting at people who live in Babylon. When you live in Babylon, that's what you have to deal with. That's what Lot had to deal with every day. God had to deliver Lot. He physically, you read your Bible. God physically sent two angels to grab Lot and his two daughters and drag them out of Sodom. And what happened to his wife? So, verse 3. The, here's the wine of Babylon. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her what? Fornication. Everybody who is listening to me now has had to deal with at one time or another in your life the sin of fornication. Everybody. fornication is it worth it it's not worth it losing your soul it's not worth it there's nobody in this world that I want to cling to that's worth going to hell over. Nobody. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. This is why Jeff Bezos, richest man in the world, because people lust and they order. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. 
that you receive not of her plagues, for her sins have re reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. God says, come out, doesn't he? So that's two witnesses. Here's your third. Turn to 2 Corinthians 6, and then I'm gonna, we're going to close. 2 Corinthians 6. And by the way, I'm, I'm letting you know right now, we're going to close down here at the, at the benches. We're going to close the service down here at the benches. Second Corinthians 6. See, this is why I give you scripture when I preach. If I don't give you scripture, then it's my words. If it's God's words, maybe it'll make a difference in your life. You've got a chance. Second Corinthians chapter 6. I want to ask you a question. Do you believe God's word? Do you believe the Bible? Now if you look down at verse 17, I've got it underlined. This is where we're going. Come out from among them and be ye separate. There's your third witness. Come out from among them and be ye separate. So here it is. Here, he's going to list now exactly, exactly to the letter. What you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. It's not me saying it. It's God. You don't like it? Get mad at God. You'll get mad at me anyway. I'll deal with it. But you don't like it. This is God saying it. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Who said that? Did I say that? God said it. God said it. I was taught at a young age, Mike, don't marry anybody that's not saved. Don't marry anybody who does not believe the way you believe. And when I was in high school, there was this girl that we went out together a few times. She was a trumpet player. Cute little thing. So we went out, ate a couple McDonald's meals, didn't have any money. Went to a couple school things, ball games, things like that. I'd drop her off at her house, you know, traditional, you know, proper date situation. Never went beyond that. And we'd call each other every night on a telephone. Remember the telephones? Telephone. You'd ring, ring, telephone. And we'd talk. You know what she did one night? She said, you know, I was, she said, I was talking to my pastor. She went to a church here in town, Baptist church. I was talking to my pastor here in town, and he said, everybody in your church ain't right. Do what? And we got into a doctrinal argument on the phone that night, and that ended the relationship. Boom. We're done. Click. Never went out with her again after that. She didn't believe what I believe. We separated. That wasn't me that did that. That was God that called me out. He did not, he was not going to let me be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. By the grace of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And I have who I have with me in my life. By the grace of God. So you be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If you have an unbeliever in a relationship, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. Because what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What if who you're with wants you to sleep together? And you're not married. 
See that wine? What if who you're with wants you to drink with them? You know who Roy had to get away from? His drinking buddies. He had to to leave his drinking buddies. Because Babylon was too strong on him. Am I right, Roy? I knew he'd come out here. What if, you're, what if the people you're hooked in with want you to drink with them? Is it worth it? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. What if who you're hanging with wants you to do drugs with them? Here, hey. I, I smoke marijuana. Is that okay with you? I do a little meth. You want something? You want to try this? You ever tried heroin? Hey, I've got some oxys here. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. What communion hath light with darkness? Hey, let's... Let's me and you get alone where nobody can see us. Is it worth it? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Satan tried three times to get Jesus into an agreement with him. And three times Jesus said no. And Jesus was weak. He was so weak he hadn't eaten for 40 days. And you think he didn't want to jump off that cliff and die? You think he didn't want to turn those stone to bread? You think he didn't want all those kingdoms? He's going to get them anyway. But he was weaker than all of us and still turned it down. And I'm glad. His father helped him. And my father has helped me. And God will help you get out of Babylon. When you, in your relationships, and the people you run with, and the people you hang with, when you take a stand for the Bible, God will help you, won't he? Because then those people will go, I don't don't want anything to do with that. What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Four things he said. I will dwell in them, walk in them, be their God. They should be my people. Four things. Just like the gospels, there's four. So he says, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And do what? Read it out loud. Touch not the unclean thing. And I promise you, you've got somebody wanting you to touch the unclean thing. And God says, come out. Touch not the unclean. I will receive you if if you'll refuse. If you'll turn it down, God said, I'll receive you and will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I don't have a dad. Except I have a heavenly father. Who has given me so much love. And so much grace. And I'm glad that he's accepted me. And I do everything I can to stay out of Babylon. And I know how hard it is. But there's nothing out there and nobody's worth going to hell over. Nobody is. So... 
who wants to come out? Who wants to come out of Babylon? Babylon. 